Road of Loss. So I just did a one minute video talking about oral contracts. And right as I finished, my colleague Ben said, well, what about statute of frauds? So first, let me summarize what I said in the one minute. So oral contracts are totally valid and they can be enforceable. Now, mindful, the statute of limitations for suing someone for breach of, a, of an oral contract is only four years, whereas a written contract in Florida is five years. So the written contract, and of course, we're corporate lawyers, we're contract lawyers, we believe in our heart that things, should, if they're important, should be in writing. I always say, if you don't care, then don't waste your money, right? But if you do care, if the other person screwed you over and it really, and they took your money or breached the contract or in other ways damaged you, and you would be upset enough to go and maybe pay a lawyer a consultation fee, then you should probably have a writing. And that's always my first question. I say, hey, did you have a writing? Now, thankfully, most people are like, yeah, I did. I had a lawyer or I even drafted something myself or I downloaded something off the internet. And usually that's better than not having a contract. It's when it's, there's no contract, then we start to ask other questions, okay? So are there text messages? Are there emails? Is there any other evidence or proof of the contract? And so there is a concept in the law, it comes from England, and it's called the English common law, which we inherited, the American common law, and it's called the statute of frauds. And what the statute of frauds says is some things are so important that they have to be in writing. So you can have an oral agreement, like me and Kaylin can shake hands and say, I agree to sell you my house for $100,000. And there could be witnesses and there could be everybody around and everyone remembers, but it's invalid on its face because we've decided that anything involving land must be in writing. Another example is anything that can't be completed in a year or less. If it can't be completed in a year or less, it has to be in writing because by its very nature, it's gonna be years and years in the future. People forget, people die, people have bad memories. And so it has to be in writing. Another one is if you're agreeing to the debt of somebody else, right? Obviously like a third person, like let's say Ben owes somebody a bunch of money and then I agree with that other person, hey, I'm gonna take over Ben's debt. That has to be in writing. And, and some of these are logical and some of them are like, hmm, scratching your head. The sale of goods over a certain amount of dollars, I think it's $500. So a sale of goods. So if I'm agreeing to sell you goods and we just have an oral agreement and I breach the agreement later on, you can't sue me because the statute of fraud says that you should have gotten it in writing. So basically, if you're doing business, you're doing transactions, especially if you're doing things on a regular basis, then it goes without saying, you should have a contract, even if it's a basic contract. In our law firm, we have what's called an engagement letter. And the engagement letter, and it is a hard and fast rule. We will not start work on a client's matter until they've signed the engagement letter. And I'm telling you, it's a 100% rule. And every time somebody says, oh, my, my bond is my word, and I don't need to, I do things old fashioned, I don't need to sign a contract, then I say, you're not the right fit for our firm. And honestly, it, 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 between me and you, it's always gonna end up badly. The people who promise you don't worry, they're the ones who you need to worry about. It's the people who have no problem signing a contract because they know that they actually honor their obligations, then that shouldn't be a big deal. So it goes without saying, the point of the story is oral contracts are valid, written contracts are better. Written contracts, you get that extra year of statute of limitation and you get all the statute of fraud issues. So if you're doing anything involving real estate, it has to be in writing. If you do anything involving the debt of another, it has to be in writing. If you do anything involving a contract or a performance that can't be done in less than a year, it has to be in writing. And last but not least, if it's anything for the sale of goods over $500, it has to be in writing. So if you have any questions about this, please reach out. I love putting things in writing. And let me just leave you with one last thing. Even if you download something off the internet, which is okay, just go and get a lawyer to review it because it could, there could be something buried in there that you just don't know about or you can't see or you're just not trained to look for. Just like I wouldn't look at an x-ray when I go to the doctor, like, hey doc, let me do that for you. No, I want the doctor to look at the x-ray because I don't know what the hell I'm looking at because I didn't go to medical school. And so my favorite, least favorite story is a client of mine didn't want to hire me to draft a non-compete, said that he would just download something off the internet. I offered to review it for him. He did not take me up on the offer. And when the guy obviously breached the non-compete three years later, it was for the wrong industry. The guy just didn't proofread the agreement he downloaded off the internet. And in fact, it said IT services instead of recruiting. It's like one, I would have caught that in 30 seconds. It would have been the best $500 he ever spent. So if you guys have any questions, remember to get it in writing, give us a call, leave a comment. Thanks.